Be with you. Uh, this is a solemn week, and we're beginning this with the Palm Sunday, celebrating uh, the triumphant entry of our Lord into his own city, Jerusalem, for the last time, and he begins his passion afterwards. The Lord goes in, and we see in that our own salvation. And so, dear sisters, dear brothers, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by... Today we... God's Paschal Mystery. That is to say, of his passion and resurrection. It was to... that he entered his own city, Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry in made by His grace, partakers of the cross, who may have a share also in His resurrection and in His life. I'm going to bless our palm. Is your palm, please. And if you have whole olives, that's all right. Oh, good. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessings. To you follow Christ, the King, in exhortation. May we reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethage, to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a coat with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on an ass, and on a coat the foe of an ass. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the coat and put their garments on them. And he sat thereon. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowd that went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Seen to the triumphant entry of our Lord into Jerusalem. But that is contrasted, and we'll see that very soon uh, during the Mass when we hear of the passion of our Lord. So the one hand, he goes into the city as a king, celebrated, and they're all hailing him. And then, at the same time, a few days after, the same people who hailed him as a king say, crucify him, crucify him. That contrast speaks also about our own life, our own life, uh, the bright moments, the moment of joy, the moments of excitement, it speaks about our own Christian journey. But also there is a moment when we unite our own suffering, our own challenges, our own difficulties with the passion of Christ. And that speaks about our life, our own journey, the ups and the downs. But what is important here is to see our Lord entering the city, signifying our own entry into not the earthly city, but the eternal Jerusalem. So whether it is challenging, it is bright, it is gloomy, we're confident that the Lord journeys with us. I often say to my friends, if you really want to make heaven, come and live in Swansea. Because of the weather. The one moment it is bright, as it is now, all right, the next minute it pours, right? It's raining. And it's raining you at home. You say, well, it's dry now. Take your raincoat with you. Because three minutes later, it becomes wet. So the weather, the Swansea climate expresses our own Christian life. And therefore, I said to my friends, when they asked me, why are you sitting in Swansea? I said, because if you live in Swansea, you have no excuse not to make heaven. Because of the changing condition. In that beautiful way, our lives, whatever it is, whether it is wet, it is gloomy, it is dry, the one thing is certain. We journey with the Lord. And so we ask him as we enter this holy week, solemn week, that our own journey with him will lead us to the eternal city in heaven. Amen. Amen. We will now follow in our Lord's footsteps, uh, make a procession into uh, the church. Uh, we'll be led by altar servers and the priest, and then I will follow, and then you will follow. When we get in, uh, we will then sing the entrance uh, hymn. All right? Okay, so. Uh... Dear friend. Following our Lord's footsteps, let us now make the crowd who accompany Jesus to Jerusalem go forth in peace.
Once again, good morning to you all. And I welcome you all to this Eucharistic celebration. Welcome all our friends and visitors. Uh, we are so pleased you are here. We're delighted and welcome to Mumbos. Welcome to Our Lady Star of the Sea. Please join us after Mass for tea and coffee in the parish room next door. Uh, in a special way, we want to welcome um, the families of um, uh, Chris and Jerry McNeish. Uh, today, this Mass is uh, offered for the repose of the soul of uh, Sue uh, Philippa and uh, uh, Chris McNeish. We remember Chris uh, passed away on Good Friday. And uh, we know the commitment that the parish had had for this, uh, the family that had for this parish for decades. And it's good to see you, Nicola, sitting where dad and mom sat for decades, decades, and you all brought up in this church. And to see you, Penny, and the rest of the family, and uh, the children, grandchildren, everyone who've come. So you know your family has been a wonderful family, stalwart uh, supporter of this parish. So we thank the Lord for you all. And we pray that the Lord will grant Sue and uh, dad uh, eternal reward. Uh, it would have been the 67th wedding anniversary of uh, your parents. So we remember them, special, wonderful couple. May the Lord grant them eternal reward and grant you all strength. All right. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who as an example of humility, for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, which us the grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offer my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore up my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. That's my sorry psalm. Response is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him, let him save him. Let him release him if, if he is his friend. Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. They divide my cloven among them. They cast lots on my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. My God, my God, I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Jesus Christ did not cling to his equality of God but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even set in death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth and in the underworld shall bend the knee at the name of Jesus. And every tongue shall acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, 
King of eternal glory. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate, the governor, and the governor put to him this question Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, do you not hear how many charges they have brought against you? But in the governor's complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was a governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. Now there was at that time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, which do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ. For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now, as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. But in that case, Pilate said to them, what am I to do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. Why? He asked. What harm has he done? But he shouted all the ladder, let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression, that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people to a man shouted back, his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole court round him. Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak. And having twisted some thorns into a crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak and dressed him in his own clothes and led him away to crucify him. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golgotha, that is, the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall, which he tasted but refused to drink. When they had finished crucifying him, they shed out his clothing by casting lots, and then sat down and stayed there, keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him. It read, this is Jesus, 
the king of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their head and said, So you will destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. The chief priest with his scribes and elders mocked him in the same way. He saved others, they said. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He put his trust in God. Now, let God rescue him if he wants him. For he did say, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour, there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, the man is calling on Elijah. And one of them quickly ran to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it him to drink. Wait, said the rest of them, and see if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus, again, crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. Let us all kneel and pause a moment. Let us rise. As that the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, the earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many holy men rose from the dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place. And they were terrified and said, In truth, this was a son of God. It is inspiring to think of what Jesus said and did. The teachings of our Lord changed the world forever. When you reflect on what he did at a time when it seemed impossible to do certain things he did, at a time when you were obliged to pay someone back in their own coin if they wronged you. He taught us and taught everyone to show love. At a time when it was forbidden to touch a leper, else it became unclean. He touched lepers, people who needed love and acceptance. What we see in the teachings of Christ, so radical, changing our world, is courage and compassion. At a time when people were rejected because they were prostitutes, they were not good enough, they were tax collectors, they were sinners. His closest friends, his best company, 
was with those people who were rejected. It is easy 2,000 years after to look at all this and say, well, it's all right. But if you put yourself in the context of our Lord, the context of his own time, it was all radical. It showed love and compassion. And that is why for many who do not even believe in Christ, they are moved by the teachings of Christ. What he taught, he changed our world, showing us courage and compassion, which is what the world ever needs. But that is not all, not about just his teaching. It's also about what he did. And to ground everything he taught, he gave himself completely for our salvation. It's an amazing thing. He died for us. And that is why it is so refreshing that every year, the church gives us this opportunity to pause and to reflect. Holy Week. It is truly a holy week. To pause and reflect on what our Lord did for us. Not only to change our world, but to change us. To give us the possibility to see God face to face. The possibility to be saved, to be redeemed. So we must make this a truly holy week. It is packed with a liturgy that expresses what he did for us. It's an amazing thing. So it cannot be like every other week of the year. And I want to encourage every one of us to find ways to make this week truly holy for what it is. A truly different week, truly spiritual. A week to pause, to reflect on his teachings, his actions, and that redemptive action. Let us pray that this Holy Week will lead us ultimately to that eternal city where we see God face to face. And we pray for those who have gone before us, our friends, families, especially for Sue, for Chris, and for Jerry that they may see Jesus in the eternal city, in the beatific vision. Amen. Amen. Let us rise and profess our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of the and Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the Pontius Pilate, the Crucified, the Holy Spirit, and the Seder of the Holy Spirit, and the Third Day He rose again from the dead. Yes, I let it go ahead. And you see there that I'll write down the Father, Father Almighty. And that you will come to judge the living and the dead. Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the reading of the Passion of Jesus leads us to pray for all who suffer this time. Let us in confidence bring our petitions before the Lord. We pray for the church and for the world. May God grant us the gifts of courage, compassion and wisdom as we face challenging circumstances together. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for our nation. May those be who are burdened with homelessness, uncertainty and poverty not be forgotten. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for people everywhere. May, the, may despair and pain be lifted from every heart. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
In thanksgiving to the Lord, we pray for our parishioners who mark their birthdays this week. Stephanie Jeffries, Elsa Rutegaard, Jack Law, Anita George, Patricia Peake, Peck, sorry, Nora Howard, Geraldine Fain. May the Lord bless them and keep them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our sick and our housebound parishioners who are listed in our newsletter. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers at this time in their lives. We think especially of Pope Francis as he affected as he's affected by a respiratory infection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our departed loved ones and all our faithful departed that the Lord will grant them eternal rest and reward. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. To Mary, our mother, who intercedes for us, we pray together. Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. In a moment of silence, we offer our own prayers and petitions. Father, we come before you and present our needs to you. Humbled by the Eucharistic love and generosity of your Son, our eternal priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our, our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, give it thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, give it thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your choice pray throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope and Mark our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, yes. and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. May graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with her will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope in what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you all for being here this morning. The church is packed. Thank you for being here. Yeah, it's good. Yes, thank you for thanking me. Okay, very good, Claire. Thank you. And once again, we want to thank you, uh, the family, uh, the extended family of Sue, uh, Chris, and uh, Jerry. Good to see you all. Good to see. And uh, yeah, it's good to see you. Wow. Very good. Very good. So happy to see you all in church. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you once again for all your family continue to do for this lovely parish. Good to see people coming back. Can see Susanna, welcome back, welcome home from Cambridge. Yeah, I can see you. And then the tallest man in the church, Richard, yeah. Good to see you from Manchester, beautiful. They're coming home for, for Easter, beautiful. Thank you all, thank you all. We've got our, our birthday blessings today. Today, by the way, today is the birthday of Stephanie. Stephanie, please come forward. Yes. Wow. And um, this week, on Friday, I think, uh, is Geraldine. Geraldine, please, you can't hide. Come forward. And then there is the little one. Little one. And uh, that is Sean at the back there. So, yeah, Nigel, please bring Sean. Yes. Wow. Yes, he was baptized. Yeah, I baptized him. So, very good. Wow. Want to thank you all. Th thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, and Geraldine. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you for all you do for the parish, and we're so grateful to you and to Terry. You've been so committed all these many years. Thank you. And Stephanie, what can we say? <laughs> yes. 
you know, she's the organist. She is so talented. Your ministry of liturgical music has inspired us, touched lives. So thank you very much. We're very, very uh, grateful to you for all you do. And by the way, hi, is mom. She's 101 now, right? 102 in July. She looks after a mom who is 102 years. And I remember we came to your house. You had a lovely lunch. And 100, he told Father, Father Clement, oh, say, come, let me see your face. All right. She's so good. So good. 102. Sharp memory. Unbelievable. So thank you very much for looking after her. Yes. God of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of your servants, Stephanie, Geraldine, and Sean, who recall the day of their birth, and rejoice in your gifts of life and love, family, and friends. Bless them with your presence, and surround them with your love, that they may enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you thank and uh, Nigeria is uh, a five pound Joe ice cream voucher for Sean. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, he's very excited. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all. Please uh, check the newsletter for uh, Holy Week uh, celebrations. Uh, beginning tomorrow, tomorrow, 6.30 p.m., we have confessions here, and there will be visiting priests. Uh, it's always... A beautiful thing to celebrate Easter uh, by going to confession. And on Wednesday, there is the crazy mass at the cathedral, 11 a.m., and they're looking for singers who can help uh, with singing on that day. And then Monday, Thursday, uh, we have uh, the mass of uh, uh, the Lord's uh, Supper here at 7 p.m., Monday, Thursday. And Good Friday in the morning, we 10.30, we have the service and a work of witness beginning here in the church. And then we'll then walk to the green there in the Mombos uh, village. It's uh, a churches together activity, ecumenical activity. And then at 2.15 p.m., Stations of the Cross, and 3 o'clock, we begin uh, the celebration of the Lord's Passion. Saturday is our vigil. The vigil celebration is at 8 p.m. So there will be no 6.30 p.m. Mass on Saturday, please. It's 8 p.m. Um, it happened at that time. Some came. But if you come at 6 o'clock, not a problem. I'll keep you in the house, give you dinner, <laughs> and then you wait until 8 p.m., all right? Not a problem. If you... uh, we're looking for volunteers to read uh, for the uh, Easter Triduum. We've got about half the number. Uh, we have a list in the porch on the notice board. Please. Sign up, sign up uh, for that. We're also struggling to get uh, people who would be happy to have uh, their feet washed on that day, washing of feet on Monday, Thursday. We have a list in the porch. Please sign up. Pope Francis has said that the washing of feet should reflect the parish. The young, the not very young, you know what I mean? Uh, men and women, so we have a list there. Please sign up. I asked someone to volunteer, and then they said to me, uh, Father, I'm happy to volunteer, but first of all, I will need pedicure. <laughs> you don't need pedicure, all right? And I promise you that your foot will not be shown on the live stream, all right? <laughs> okay. Thank you all. The Lord be with you. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you. 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and Mass is celebrated. Let's go. 